Hello and welcome to the third video in the University of Auckland's six-part series on Nectar onboarding. These videos provide a hands-on guide to getting up and running with a remote Windows virtual machine on the University of Auckland's Nectar cluster. The end of the last video we had created our virtual machine using a Windows uh, image from the University of Auckland. In this video we will be going through the process of setting up security groups and ensuring that we have the correct ports open in the instance firewall to allow us to use the remote desktop protocol to access our Windows machine from a local computer. In this video we'll cover creating a security group, managing the access rules that exist within that security group, and then attaching the security group to the instance. Unlike previous videos in this series, most of the information in this video is generic and can be applied to all Nectar nodes. I'm going to now head back to our Nectar dashboard where we have our Windows instance that we created from the last session. So when we le left um, the instance at the end of the last video, we had created the instance named Chris Video Test. We'd given it um, an image which was based on one of the University of Auckland's windows. It has an IP address that's been allocated to it and we can see that this instance is currently running. In order to access this virtual machine from our local computer we need to ensure that there are holes in the firewall with the correct ports open so that we can use a remote desktop protocol from our local machine. In order to do that we need to select the network tab and under the network tab find security groups. When we click on the security groups button this changes to a different page where we can see the list of security groups that have currently been built for this project. And again remember we are in the workshops hash CER project which is a test space that's been set up for the Centre for eResearch. Normally when you would look at this for a new project there would be one security group. That security group would be the default security group that is created and applied to all instances. So we're going to create a new security group and the way we do that is we come to the create security group button and click on that. We then need to give our security group a name and once again I would encourage you to pick a name that is meaningful. So this is our Chris Video Security Group. and you can provide a short description. In this case I'm not going to bother um, but it's a good practice to put some information in there to ensure that you, you can recognize what this is for. We then click create security group and that will bring us to a different page again. So in the default settings we have egress using either internet protocol version 4 or version 6 and we've allowed egress 
from our virtual machine on all ports. So the firewall is set up so it doesn't block anything that's going out. It's only blocking things that are coming in. We need to make sure that a signal coming in from your local machine can access that virtual machine. So we need to add a rule that allows us to put that access in. If you click the add rule button brings you to a form and we're fortunate in that the rule that we want to apply is remote desktop protocol access or RDP. If we go to the rule drop down box when we select here there is an RDP option near the bottom where the ports required have been predefined for us. So we can click on that to select and then we can give it a short description should we want to but we can otherwise leave that unchanged. So we can then add that rule to our security group. And we can see now there is a rule that is based on ingress so it's allowing stuff in and it's opened port 3389 which is the RDP protocol port. Another port that you may need to consider opening is the SSH port which is port 22. And we do that the same way, we click the add rule, we select SSH and we add and that port is used if you are planning on using the secure copy protocol SCP as a means of moving data from your local machine to the remote machine. The rule of thumb to apply with security groups is if you don't need the port open then you don't open the port. So only open those that you know you will need. We can then return to the main view of the security groups and we can see that my new security group, Chris Video Security Group, has been added. Now if you find at some point that you need to open another port, you can always come back to your security group and you can do one of two things. You can either create a new security group or you can take an existing security group and you can click on the right hand side manage rules. So when you click manage rules that takes us back to the page that we have just been at where we now have the option to add new rules or if I find that I opened port that I don't need open, I can then click delete rule. I'll be asked to confirm my decision and once that's processed then that port has now been closed and that will be effective across any instance that I have attached the security group to. Which brings us to the next point. We have created a rule, we have created a virtual computer what we need to do now is to link the two together. In order to do that we need to go back to our instance view which we do by selecting the compute tab and then instances and this will reload our screen that we saw previously. I need to identify the instance or virtual machine that I want to attach those security rules to in this case this is my Chris video test and then if I come right across to the right hand side there's a button on the right. This has lots of different functions that we can use that affect the instance. In this case we want to attach a security group so we click the down button and then we come down to edit security groups we select that And this will bring a form up where we can see these are all 
the security groups that exist within the project that we have constructed and on the right hand side here we have the security groups that are currently active on that instance. If I want to add a security group I click the plus button on the left hand side and that security group is moved across to the right. If I click a security group by accident that I don't want then in order to remove that I come across to the right hand side and I click the minus button and that disappears again. Once I've selected the security groups that I wish to apply to my instance then I can click the save button. This will go through a process of attaching that security group to that instance and once that has been done then that port will be opened in the instance firewall and I will be able to connect using my local machine. And just check to make sure that you see a success up in the top right hand corner. That brings us to the end of this video. In the next video in this series we'll be looking at how we create a virtual hard disk and attach that hard disk to the instance. Look forward to seeing you then.